This video contains a lot of real ranch experience. No, Mark. No, Mark. They're all tired. What do you think of these things? He thinks they should be baked. That does not look appetizing. Good. That's what real men eat. Is oh, oh yeah. Horse now, flies. if you eat that, that would be, you know, decent content. And kelp. Oh my goodness, look at that. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it gets harder to learn the older you get. You think you know more. And... Yeah, I think a lot of that, though, is, is a desire to learn. That's right. Be a lifelong student and learner. Well, they're not all stopping to drink. That's a good sign. The elk just left. They don't want to graze that. They want the, the, the new shoots of grass to come after cattle or a larger ungulate like buffalo have been on there saying, well, cattle shouldn't be there, horses should be there, whatever. You're not considering the ecosystem. You're, you're making a decision most of the time based on your emotional response to something. Sometimes at the end of a long day, you're tempted to just leave them here. You know, oh, they're good enough. But you hear them bawling all over the place like that. That means that they haven't found their calf yet. They're looking for their calf. They're not really looking for the calf. They're over there eating. All right, so we got all them things. We got lunch out of the way. It's one of those things we just get out of the way, you know. Got to saddle my horse back up quickly and go out there. And we're going to push one herd of cows up the road. Try to take some of the neighbor stuff out of there. And then we'll come back and get the other herd later and go up to the forest service with it. So he thinks he's done, but he's not anywhere near done today. Are we really going back to work? Yeah, exactly, yeah, are we really going back to work? Look at the thorns on those trees. All right, buddy boy. Ugh. I'll let you stand there for a little bit with the saddle off. Whoa. You got it, no, no, go that way. There you go. He's like, are you kidding me? Whoops, sorry, bud. Sorry. Sorry, didn't mean to whack you in the flank with the... Exactly. Chinks on. Well, how many is probably in here? Oh, there should be about an 80. That's without thinking about it very long. Yeah, just rough guess. Guesstimate. The calf is 360, so 360 pair minus 134 is pair. Yep. Minus whatever we didn't get gathered the last few days. Right. On accident. <laughs> On accident. Yeah. Yep, yep. But we're going to get the cows started here. And then we'll follow them over. See if we locate, if we see any of the neighbor's cows in here. There's a few, few of the neighbor's cows, or there was. So they got to be in here someplace. Yep, yep, yep. Hey! Hey, cows! Hep! Yep! Hey! 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 You gotta watch them thorn bushes. Hey! Hey! Yep! Hey! 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 Come on! Everybody's gotta go this time. We're not sorting pairs anymore. Yep! 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 Hey! Hey! Oh! Oh! oh don't stick your head in the branch go that way go that way right there right there there you go <laughs> he's like trying to go too far hey hey get out of there calf that little really fresh late calf is laying by this broccoli in the oh zone. let's just leave them back if she'll stay if if she'll stay there yep, we'll just leave them. there's one 
one calf that's really new and uh, when you're pushing them down the road they they'll just be really slow they they tire out really quickly because he's only been born a couple days and then they pushed him down off the top there so he's laying down over there with his mom right over there so if if they'll stay there we'll just leave them i think we can leave her there she's probably going to stay there right by her calf they're they're more protective so see how she held right to her her calf's laying right there in the in the bush bushes so they're more protective when they're young like that later on they don't care as much they like let them run quite a ways away from them yep you want to close this whoop, whoop, whoop. wasn't paying attention gotta get this calf in here this is going too fast not gonna see it not gonna see it there he goes there he goes he noticed the he's like oh hey there's an opening there can i go through yep i can <laughs> That's the thought process right there. Oh, whoa. hold of his mane just letting him drink up a little bit right here before we take him over some of these apparently haven't drank nothing because they're all drinking Or maybe they're standing in the creek and cooling off. I don't know. Yep. Hey. Hey, calves. Hey, calves. Yep. Hey, calves. Yep. Hey. Hey, cavy. Hey, cavy. Yep. Hey calves, hip, hip, hip. So he was, at the beginning of the day, Calabar wasn't really drinking very much because he's, you know, you don't need to, horses don't need to drink that much when they're not doing a whole lot. And now he's, he drinks like every time we hit a water hole. I mean, he's like sucking down the water. <laughs> Just like me, I've drank a gallon of water today if I've drank an ounce, drunk an ounce, whatever it is. But, Yeah. One animal in here that is not. Hey, I'm gonna bring that heifer back that way now. Yeah, is not hey, ours or not his, so it shouldn't be in this herd. Is she right here in the no. She's way in the far end, right? Cavy, yeah. no cavy. <laughs> Almost got just her. There's one. There's one more of them cows in here. Right here. There's one more of the neighbors' cows. Right up, up about, up about four. I guess if we could cut her back, huh? 
Right in front of you. Right in front of you, right there. Yep. Here we are, y'all. See if I can get a get them cut off here. There you go. Whoop, 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 whoop. There we go. There we go. Come on. Yeah, these horses are a little thirsty. I know. Yeah. We left him back there, or her back there. Shot it at the road. She can come into here and we'll get her eventually. Which one? Hold that. They got her back. Holy She's Jesus. back there. We just shut the road again. So now this is should be fairly easy. This road has this road has fences on both sides, which I'm not I'm not used to moving cows at all with fences on both sides. So we should be able to just go straight down the road and they're ahead of us they're ahead of us so somebody will just open the open the gate out ahead of us and turn them in where they go should be simple unless they jump into somebody else's field hey cattle hup. Scott, we could almost sort this one off and leave her Oh, that's not her. <laughs> this one is a hot, dry son of a gun. The cows are, do because it's so warm, they're just like finding each patch of shade, they just stop and under each tree, they don't want to move, so. We've had to push it push them every single step of the way down this road. It's getting pretty long. And hopefully we don't have to do this with the second group that's got to go to the forest because that would be a long trip. Hips! Hips! The dust is just like full of pollen here so better that they're pushing up so just getting my eyes my allergies in my eyes are just like puffing up bad. <laughs> that way, there you go. Did he come through? Tired and hot, aren't they? Them or us? Huh? Them or us? You, you and us, and them. Look at, I mean, them calves are dragging their mouths open and yep. foaming. Look at all the calves in the back here. They're all tired. Hey calves! Hey calves! Hey calves! Hey calves! Hey calves! Tired and thirsty. Probably better mother these up. They are like way unmothered. All the calves are in the back. That's a good spot. Yeah. So something like this, if you had internet, would you ever live stream the whole thing? Just that'd be cool. This is so somebody could see how somebody just watch hard it is. Yeah. yeah. So my daughter got me these sardines. 
and I figured I would try them at some point because I've never had sardines. I've had kipper snacks like Tanner here says. That's actually good because it's just a fillet of fish in a can, right? Or smoked oysters are real good. Something but, like that. Yeah, sardines. Huh? Kipper snacks are great warmed up. Oh, I yeah, bet. I bet. Yeah, well, good. this isn't going to be warm. Dave, what do you think of these things? Uh, they should be used for bait. Yeah, he thinks they should be bait. So, could you hold that for me? Of course. So if they're good, then I'll I'll pass them out. But if they're not any good, then oh man, that did not, that did not look good. And hungry is a pretty good cook, we say. Oh yeah. Oh goodness. Smell like fish the rest of the day. <laughs> look at that. I'm gonna pour that out. It's good bear bait. Perfect, perfectly cut herring right there. Yeah. So it kind of looks. Is that Survivor? Yeah. It doesn't actually look like a full. Ugh. It's 9 p.m. and we it haven't eaten a... since yesterday, so. That does not look appetizing. Mm. Does it? Yeah. Let me try one. Not bad. It's not, no. It's like, it's fish. Edible. Fishy. Yeah. It's very oily. Good for you. You think it's, well, it's probably. Protein, probably... oils, fats, all mixed yeah. into one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Maybe some organs. There's a few organs. Huh? Yeah. Cure it ails you. It's not bad. Good for moles, coals, sore holes, you fits, farts, and freckles. Enough, like some <laughs> napkins or something. You want some? You want, you want some? Okay. He'll take a bite. You bet. Mm -hmm. You got your own knife, or? Yeah, I do. No, you probably don't want to eat off my knife. <laughs> it's hard to get him. Just yeah, just just spear one. Just don't stab your tongue. Okay. Good <laughs> lord. It takes some practice to figure this out how to eat them. Scott, you want to try one? No, I'm really comfortable. Are you? I can come over there. Scott wants a white macadamia mm -hmm. chocolate chip cookie. Let me eat this one because that I don't mind them at all. You want one, Tanner? I'd love one. I like fish. What do we got? Cow coming out. Cow. You got a knife? I sure do. It's a little easier and yeah. less to get that oil all over you. Thanks for yeah. sharing. Yeah. Get her. Oh, there you go. Shake that. Nice and there flaky. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's bad at all. It's I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Not what I expected. I thought that would be pretty... Come. I thought that would probably be pretty bad, but... Yeah, you start with low expectations and it's Well, exactly. Good. Yes, I started with pretty dang low expectations <laughs> so that may have helped but scott if you want to try some i will save you a little no okay dave you want a little bite <laughs> leave it here come back and shoot a bear tomorrow when he smells the yeah. oil all yeah that's right i'm gonna finish oh, yeah. these up actually unless one of you wants some more here you take yeah, a little I'll try a little more i did enjoy it yeah, no lie. You want you want some more? You do? Jay, you want some more? I'm good, bud. Thank you. That was actually really good. And it doesn't really clean off your hands very well. It's kind of like bacon grease. Scott says I'm making it sound better all the time. <laughs> so if you got oil on your hands, you can find some sand. Find some sand you can use it to clean pans with too or gravel. A lot better. <clears throat> what's it what's that stuff called that you wash your hands with that's got grit in it? It's like the orange or yeah, the orange. It's like the original orange stuff. If you grab some Go, Gojo, isn't it? Gojo. Yeah, Gojo. yeah. If you grab some sand and just wash the scrub the crap out of your hands, it will take the 
It likes to take the dirt off and a little grease or oil. Careful there, buddy. <laughs> well, how long do you think it'll take them to get all paired up now, Dave? Could take a day. Sounds like forever, doesn't it? Because yeah. they're still balling like crazy up there. <laughs> we just ate some sardines, but now we're gonna have some wag wag you beef wag bites, which are probably a little they're a little more mainstream, let's say, right? <laughs> Wouldn't you say? I would say definitely. <laughs> definitely? You, you prefer those to I the... I definitely prefer those to sardines. Kyle prefers those to the sardines for sure. Good. Yep. Dave even eats this stuff because it's it's actual beef. So I was telling Scott though, he was saying that... The, what were you saying? You need to do a redneck thing like... Yeah. Your you food might not be good if... Your food not, might not be good if you have to wash your hands off with mud in the stream. <laughs> I was thinking like real man, you know, if you got your you might be a real man if you eat sardines in the mountains and then have to wash your hands off in the stream full of cow crap and mud. But the, the two that didn't eat the sardines didn't think that was a very good idea. So this You was, want some Dave? This was red meat at one time, huh? This was what? Red meat at one time? This is red meat, yeah. You, you better take a couple of them. Oh yeah, I remember good. This isn't the cranberry and jalapeno ones. It's be it's original, so it's beef beef with a purpose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You like those, don't you? Oh, yeah. It was a regular. So not even the I weird ones. I will try not to grab the. Yeah, your son grabbed the, the packaging thing. The uh -huh. gel. Have that taste. <laughs> <laughs> I caught him before he ate it. <laughs> and before you think he's good. That's what real men eat. Is oh, oh yeah. Horse now flies. if you eat that, that would be you know decent content. I don't think you've done it. For... <laughs> Tanner's... He's, he's thinking about it, but I don't think he's going to. That's I wouldn't eat I mean, that it's thing. it's still alive. It's probably full of blood. Horse blood. Horse, Horse blood. blood. Or cow blood. And cow... Oh my goodness, look at that. He just chewed that thing up. <laughs> what does it taste like? Wagyu bites. Because <laughs> that's what you have residual in your mouth? <laughs> or you missed? <laughs> that was what he actually had in his hand. I see. <laughs> I would hope he didn't actually eat that thing. Oh, he ate it. <laughs> Look at that. Ugh. Yeah, it's even got some blood on the end of his finger there. <laughs> that is... Talking, speaking of the real man thing, that might have took the cake there. I don't know. Measure of a WD? Oh my goodness, that's there, not just, good. There's the jump. Yep. The measure of a man's not what he eats. The, exactly. It's what he is. And his his uh, ability to take on responsibility for right. what he does. Yep. Provide, protect, responsibility. Eating horse flies has nothing to do with it. Right. Well, <laughs> it, that's just it's one way or the other. It doesn't really... <laughs> it might even actually make you not very smart, but... <laughs> <laughs> so it's not really the measure of a man. So we're gonna head back down. Got one more group of cows. We ought to get. And Dave's gonna sit here and watch these cows and make sure they kind of mother up. The next group of cows has got to go up the road four miles, which is even further. Yeah, now normally, now watch this. Oh, oh, he didn't even do it. Usually he hops around with the first couple hops with his front feet. Because he doesn't know they're off of there or not. He's like, whoop, whoop. See you, Dave. Yep. Thanks, Dave. So how many hours have we been riding now? I mean, 
So we started out at 6.30. Yeah. Because people like to know this kind of thing. So nine, nine hours. Nine hours so far we've been riding. We got to ride back down to the yeah. ranch. They just, a couple, uh, Kyle, what's his name? Jason and Kyle. So Jason and Kyle are headed down to the ranch to go turn them cows into the water. So they're not hunting water the whole way up here, hoping that makes a difference. And, uh, oh yeah, look at that, a winter kill. But well, anyway, so we're going to go down and get this second group of cows, and they got to go even twice as far up the road as this group of cows. And this group of cows was, whoa, 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 whoa. Supposed to be the easy group. <laughs> Supposed to be the easy group. Yeah, the quick group. So we'll see how it goes. It might be about 12 hours of riding by the time we get done. We'll see. All right, we're back to the house here. I'm just gonna pull the saddle off of him again, tie him up in the shade for a couple hours until it gets cooler. So maybe these cows move up this road better because they're in this heat. It finally, finally heated up in Montana and now they just don't want to go up that road. They're trying to dive off in the shade, dive off in the water. So we'll see. Maybe if we, maybe if it cools off a little bit, we can we can go up the road a little easier. up there just to kind of get air underneath my saddle bag all right you got calibar back out of the brush over there i'm gonna saddle him back up for the last time today one more push from this last uh load of cows it's the sun's starting to go down a little bit we took an hour and a half break and now we're gonna start over again so we got to take this next bunch of cows up the road about four miles so twice as far as the last herd of cows and then up to the Forest Service permit. So it is now about six o'clock. And, and you can definitely feel I, the heat was getting us the last time. I think it was really making it hard for those cattle were trying to fight us all the time. It's still hot, but you can tell the sun is, is starting on its arc down. So it doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel near as hot, that's for sure. So hopefully, Hopefully that means that these cows will move down that road way better than they did the last time because that was a lot of work to get them down the road even two miles. So, you ready for one more, one more trip? One more trip today? Yeah, he's, he's looking like he's had some miles today. <laughs> he lost a little bit of weight today, didn't you? Already. You ready, Calabar? Huh? One last three hour ride. And then we're done for today, for this weekend. And you can go eat grass for the rest of the weekend. So are they all in the water area there, Tanner? That's right. That's right, they should be rested, watered, and just eager to go to their new home. Well, I, I like the optimism. I like his optimism there. It should be rested, watered, and eager to go up there. We'll see. I hope he's right. All right. He didn't even, he didn't even twitch when I got on there. He's like, I don't, I don't think we should go. <laughs> I think Calabar is thinking we should just stay here. Again? I think he's thinking we should just stay here. He's like, I, th I think we've done this enough today. Yeah, if he, if he had a vote. Then if he had a vote, yeah. I think Elmer might say the same. Too bad he doesn't have a vote. <laughs> we learning. Exactly. If we're not learning, we ain't gaining anything e anyways. And how we do that is experience. That's right. Well, actually, 
So I, I believe you can actually do the same thing. Or two people can do the same thing. One of them can learn something from it. And the other one learns absolutely nothing from it. It's all about how you're looking at it. You're, if you're all, oh, everything's terrible and like nothing's going right, you're never going to learn nothing about it. Or it's nothing good, anyway. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it gets harder to learn the older you get. You think you know more. And... Yeah, I think a lot of that, though, is, is a desire to learn. That's right. Be a lifelong student and learner. I, it's way more fun in life, I think, if you're always looking for ways to learn something new. So and There's so much to learn. So much to learn. You think you know something about a field and then think you're going to learn. You get a specialist in that field. You just there's depth there that you didn't know was there. Exactly. It could be anything. It could be plumbing. Yep. Engineering, civil, electrical, science. It could be scripture. It could be cowboying. The deeper you get into a field, the more you find out it's there. Oh man. That's that's sweet. There's only one who's all knowing. Yep. We're not. We'll never. There's so much to delve into that we would never be able to learn at all. I think this will go well, but, you know, it's 609, it's hanging at about you, 80 degrees. And you can really feel the difference in the intensity of the sun. I mean, it it's still 80 degrees, but the intensity of the sun just drops off as it gets down lower like this. It just doesn't feel the same. All right, so we're going to start this. We're going to have to mosey these cows on over here. Oh. Got them all gathered up this morning. Sorted off. There's 132 pairs that we sorted off from the main herd. We've been riding now for about 12 hours straight. So about 12 hours, and we got about three or four more hours to go. Yep, yep. Get to the. Yep, yep, yep. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, now he's going to drink. My horse. Yeah. Oh, bud. I guess two seconds is an exaggeration. Yeah, a little exaggeration. It's already been gone. So Scott's going to go down there. See if he can get that calf back across onto the right side. We're going to take him. We're going to take these cows across. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Well, they're not all stopping to drink. That's a good sign. Thank you. Hey, girls. Hey, girls. Yep, yep, yep. Long ways to go for you to stop right now. <laughs> They'll just kind of mosey on up there. It's just gonna be a while. So we're pushing these up to the four service permit. So ranchers have been able to lease four service public ground to put cattle on for a long time. People get upset about that all the time. So there's a couple things that I would say about that. We got to get there's a calf sometimes there's a calf that goes through the fence and you gotta you gotta push him back 
up the fence to get him through the fence. There he goes. There he goes. So number one, when the Forest Service ground was actually formed, formed as a public ground entity, that was one of the intentions was for it to be a grazing allotment for cattle. Now people say, oh, well, we shouldn't have cattle on there because the elk need it. Or sometimes they say we should have wild horses and a buffalo on it and stuff like that. And that's an argument for a different day. You could, you could argue those things. What I will argue is that you're utilizing, number one, you're utilizing, utilizing public ground for the production of beef. Now, there's grass on public land. And it does take into consideration when you have elk on it, deer on it, all that kind of stuff. They utilize the grass as well, but they like to actually like to follow the cattle on public ground or any ground. They like to graze after the cattle have grazed it down. This is just a, it's just the way it is. The more they reduce the stocking numbers on the forest, the less elk they have on the national forest too. The what? when they reduce the stocking yeah they actually i so i was talking to bill briggs you can look back at my video right here i'll put a link to it talking to bill briggs when his family ranch when he was outfitting and they they changed they took all the cattle off the forest service there actually eliminated his hunting district from being able to make money from hunting because the, the elk just left they don't want to graze that they want the, the, the new shoots of grass to come after cattle or a larger ungulate like buffalo have been on there for a while. So right now we're utilizing cattle for that purpose. And you really have to take in consideration not just one animal. I think that's what I'm learning most of all, that you have to take in consideration the entire ecosystem when you start saying, well, cattle shouldn't be there, horses should be there, whatever you're not considering the ecosystem you're you're making a decision most of the time based on your emotional response to something right now cheatgrass is all ripened already cheatgrass is yeah. headed out right turning brown and cheatgrass is everywhere on the forest these these cows aren't going to graze cheatgrass already. no not with everything else green no now they will they will choose cheatgrass an off it though when it's green that's what they've done. They keep pushing turn-in dates back. If you wanted to get rid of some cheatgrass, put more cattle on earlier. Oh, I see. No graze the cheatgrass. Oh, absolutely, and get rid of the get rid of the heads. But now they've all gone to seed. So what, what he's saying is, is that when you when a, a grass grows up, it grows up and it heads out, and it gets which basically means it's producing it's producing seeds. Then it drops the seeds on the ground and produces more of that same plant. So cheatgrass is something they're trying to get rid of, but they want they, the Forest Service, people who manage the Forest Service don't want cattle on early. They want them on late. Well, then the cheatgrass has already headed out and dropped its seeds. So you've already seeded it back to cheatgrass, basically. So there's all, all kinds of management practices that you have to take in consideration, not just, well, I want cattle here, I don't want cattle here, I want elk right there, or horses right here. It all works together, and you have to consider the whole thing to really make good decisions, and that is definitely something that government and organizations that want to save, like, just the wild horse, or just want to reinduce the wolf, or whatever it is, they don't consider those things. In fact, a lot of those organizations are just there to try to make money off of your donations. So they want you to, they want to invoke an emotional response so that you will give them money. And then they can take something to court that they don't have to pay any money for because the government pays both sides in a lawsuit against the government. They are abusing it. And if you have any questions about that, make sure you leave a comment down below. I can explain it in like a podcast or something. It makes sense. It, not, let me say it. it doesn't make sense, but it, it's very easy to think. Well, if we want more, if we want more elk on the forest, obviously you have to take another one going on. It it sounds easy, simple. Easy, sounds easy simple to make those conclusions. Yes. But 
it doesn't work that you way. have to be able to look and see what's happening with your own two eyes right and your common sense has to say well you know i thought that was a great idea but i don't i don't see the outcome that i thought i would see well and we have enough science now to tell us that some of these ideas are just they're just not relevant but it doesn't matter because you're dealing with emotional response instead of reality or science so get a tiny bit of moisture in september i have all of the elk are going to flood to what i grazed in may and june yes because they like love that grass I grazed in july and august right what i grazed in may and june right we're going to go after that Easy, yep short rich grass Exactly. Yes. Just because you have tall grass doesn't mean there's anything in it. It's not, it, tall grass is actually, usually has very little nutrients in it. It's not nutrient rich. Because it, you have the same amount of nutrients no matter how tall the grass is. So the more you stretch it out, the less nutrients you have per weight, right? So the short grass has more nutrients in it per inch than the tall grass. And that's what the elk want. It's like it's like a, a filet mignon versus chicken nuggets or something. So another argument about putting cattle on public ground is how much money the rancher is making off of public ground. The rancher is just making so much money off of public ground. The, the only people that actually say that are the ones who have no idea how much a rancher actually makes. Making money as a rancher is very difficult. Right? Move. Come back. Right. Good girl. Watch the cow. Go, Bart. Get back. Okay. So you can buy, so six calves could buy you a new pickup in 1978. A brand new Chevy pickup. Okay, so now take, now if you had, let's say, okay, it's pretty easy to figure the second one, because let's say last year, a thousand dollar calf. Right? So it would take you 90, 90, 80 or 90 calves to buy a, a brand new pickup last year. That's how disproportionate the cost of everything that a rancher needs to grow these cattle has gone up. Thousands of percentage percent, but the cost, the price of what he's selling hasn't gone up hardly at all. Now, it got, went up this year to 100%. You know, maybe, if they can contract their calves for $3.50 a pound, that's quite a bit of a difference. But, the price of a pickup went from $3,500 to, to $90,000 in the same period of time. That's not 10%, that's a hundred, that's a thousand, two thousand percent. And that was for it's a like fully loaded pickup. Fully, fully loaded, loaded pickup loaded with all the bells and whistles. So we're talking that's 2,500% increase since 1978 for a pickup and a hundred percent increase for cattle. That, that is not proportionate. So now ranchers are having to do more with free labor, trying to figure out what, finagle ways to make more money on the, on the same amount of ground. Yeah, just make to make up the difference by running more. Yeah, and just trying to make a living, like a normal just living, like barely. We're not talking make a ton of money, just make it through the year. So these four service leases are enabling ranchers to stay in business. Now, why do you want ranchers to stay in business? That's because every rancher that stays in business protects a certain amount of land from development and loss to encroachment. Um, he manages the grass on it for free. On public land, every, every taxpayer pays for public land, whether they use it or not hundreds of millions of dollars a year. So these are my arguments I'm taking today. And if you think that everything will go next That is a dumb cow. I gotta stop and take your
got our backup catchers back here. They're catching the cows and we're letting by because we're talking. talking too much. <laughs> you think that everything would be better if it was in the public's hands, ask yourself how the government's doing it taking care of stuff. Exactly. Private private landowners will do a better job taking care of it than the government does. Well, if you don't believe it, just look around at how the government's doing it. Exactly. Exactly. Hey cows, hey cows, hey cows. I mean, look at the National Forest in 30 years. It's yeah. like a train wreck of what it used to be. Yeah, and, and the management process of it, they're so behind on money for financing the, 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 just keeping it managed, clearing trails and keeping uh, access sites open and, and this camping sites. Doing nothing is doing something. Yes. Like doing nothing is helping something. Yeah, yeah. Doing nothing does not help the land. It has been managed for a thousand years. 99%. Of what? Bread. Oh yeah. I guess 100%. 99%. That one might not be bread because she's in heat. So That's why she's riding another cow. Hey, let's hey go. cows! Hey cows! Hey cows! Hey, let's go! Hey cattle, hop! Hey, hey! You, just, you have you elk on private ground. I get ground. that with elk. That same argument about doing nothing is something. You know, they say you you have elk on private land because you. You give them sanctuary and you don't do anything. Well, that's not true. I run 350 pair of cattle on private land. I graze my grass. I drive around. I monitor cows on ATVs and side by sides and horseback. We do stuff all the time. So why why do we have them in the forest? Does it? Yeah. Because we're doing something with our land. We're managing. We're not, we're not doing nothing, and we have elk. That's, that's incorrect. And you're managing. You're actually managing the the land in a different way than the forest is. If you just let something sit, it's like sitting at, letting a house sit for two years with I'm nobody in it. ground being used as best as we can use it is better elk habitat than the forest, by far. Oh, absolutely. And we hunt them. Right. We don't give them sanctuary, we don't. I got hunters all month of September and I got the shoulder season for six months of the year. Yep. It's just... We were talking. We were talking about the fact that the reason that people, the ranchers, have outfitters on their land, to is to make money because they can't make enough money on their cattle. So if they could make enough money on their cattle, honestly, they wouldn't have outfitters on their land. They don't. Well, they don't really want to have outfitters on their land. They just do it because they can't make enough money off the cattle. Honestly. Hey! 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 Hey cows, hey cows, hey cows, hey cows, hey! Calf, get out of there. Hey, 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 hey! Hey cattle, hey cattle, hey cattle, hey cattle, hey! <laughs> He's laying back his ears at him, isn't he? Hip, 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 hip! We're, we're probably going a half a mile an hour down this road, literally. When we came up here with the last herd, we had to ride. I was riding over in the fence. Scott was walking over there. This time we brought along a bunch of kids. So we, we don't have any more dogs. So we brought kids along. And kids are actually pretty good at getting them out of the fence lines there. So you can just ride down the middle of the road. So just the moral of the story, if you can't find a dog, just grab a couple kids. Right, Tanner? Seem to be good little cow dogs. Yeah. And they, they enjoy it a lot. They, they enjoy it a lot. They're working pretty good. When somebody goes through, when somebody's trying to drive down the road when you're moving cows like this, it's like a sea. It's like they're parting the sea. Hip, hip, hip. You see that? The cows are just going around them like very close to around them. Hip, hip. Because the cows are used to vehicles, they're just used to not being able to go around them. Hey, hey, hey! Hup, 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 hup! Yeah! Get down there, hup, hup, hup! Hup, hup! Hey, 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 hey! There we go. It's alright. It's pretty good. You can see how that 
kind of flow around it like water, but it does slow them up. It makes it more difficult to get them to go down the road because it's like pushing them backwards while you're trying to push them this way. It's now 7.37. We're still moving down the down the trail here the cows are moving they're not they're not moving great but they're moving they're not moving fast or nothing we did lose one calf straight up the mountain so that one will probably end up back at the home ranch and we'll have to they'll have to trailer him up here okay hold up for just a second hip 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 get this little group of calves going hey 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 cavies hip hip so it's eight o'clock now. We're starting to get into the actually the evergreen timber here, and that definitely you can feel the temperature drop, can't you? Yeah, dropping and getting cooler. So hopefully these cows will start moving a little better. They're starting to pick up the pace just a little bit. I can tell, and it's not because we're pushing them harder. It's just cooler air. They start to move a little better. They're not trying to halt all the time. Whoop, whoop, back up. There you go. All right. Well, we got into the forest, per, the forest service now. Just, just now. Cows are moving up the road pretty good, though. Okay, we're almost to the end here, but we do have to actually work on this one because. Come on, cattle. Come on, cattle. Hup, hup, hup. Hup, 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 hup. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, calves. Hup, 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 hup. All right, well, we are here. It is 9 o'clock, and we got up to where on the forest permit here. So this is the cows being, we're, we're stopping right here, put them in the gate, and we're trying to hold them in one spot until they kind of find their babies a little bit. Otherwise, they'll just leave them right here, and the babies will try to go all the way back to the branch. So... Tanner's over there trying to hold them. I'm gonna hold them on this side. So when they mother up, if this battery fails, this is my last battery. When they mother up, then this is where we're gonna leave them right here. So that's it for today. That was a heck of a day. So it's nine o'clock, that's uh, nine hours plus six hours. That's a 14 hour day. So hope you enjoyed it. If you want to go down below and leave some comments of your opinions and thoughts, that would be awesome. Until next time, God bless. Sometimes at the end of a long day, you're tempted to just leave them here. You know, oh, they're good enough. But you hear them bawling all over the place like that. That means that they haven't found their calf yet. They're looking for their calf. They're not really looking for the calf. They're over there eating. So if you were to leave them and not worry about it, the problem is, is that then they're gonna head back to the last place they saw their calf, which is usually way back at the ranch if they didn't if they didn't pair up right here. So it's imperative that you take the time, to hold them in here. You hold them in here and make them stay, make them stay in the group till they quit. Everybody quits balling. They find their calves. Hip. Like that cow, she's she hasn't found a calf yet. Not even looking. <laughs> so that means that her calf is somewhere over there. And he hasn't if he hasn't found his mom, then that means he'll he might go all the way back to the ranch to find her. If we just leave. I mean they'll come right through the gate and get back in there. Hip, hip, hip. Hip, hip. Go find your calf, 21. So, so it's worth the extra time to just sit here and make them, make them mill around and find their calf. So then that the last time that, that would be, that would mean that the last time they saw their mother was right here. So if they lose her again, they'll come back to this spot instead of all the way back to the ranch, which is at least four miles away. And it's a rough four miles too. 